Okay, we're going to do a full service today on a Freelander 1 facelift model, late 2004, TD4, 2-litre diesel. Um, I'm not a professional mechanic, but I'm just going to go through stuff I've picked up. So if, if I'm making any mistakes on anything, feel free to comment. You're going to need a service pack of uh, filters. This is your air filter. That's your oil filter with its little o-rings that go with it which are essential by the way that's your pollen filter or cabin filter this is your diesel filter which supposedly is supposed to change every 60,000 miles but depending on the, the quality of the diesel where you are which here in Cyprus is really bad I'm going to change it anyway this is your turbo vent filter this is the crankcase breather filter or PCV filter with its corresponding uh, little rubbers that come with it which you're really going to need. A sump plug washer which you'll want to replace after you put your uh, sump plug back on. Um, some 530 semi-synthetic oil but obviously you can use whatever oil is suitable to your climate where you are. And this is my EGR valve which we'll go we'll talk about a bit later. Uh, you might want to get an EGR bypass valve, um, but as I say, we'll talk about that in a bit. Before we jack up the front of the car, make sure you've chocked both of your back wheels. Very important for safety. The first thing you're going to have to do is take off the uh, belly pan under there so you can get access to the thump plug. But before you do that, you're going to have to jack up the car with the trolley jack, or even if you haven't got a trolley jack, um, you can use the normal jack that comes with the car and use the jacking point just under the front wheels which is under this plastic thing right there and don't forget the most important thing of all as well as chucking the rear wheels and putting on the handbrake is to use at least a two ton jack stand, axle stand which you need to place under these axle cross members here don't uh, don't even think about going under the car without putting axle stands because uh, you could lose your life okay so we're jacked up about 18 inches off the ground in the jacking point there and to put the other one the other axle stand over there just going to put this one on that structural member there And just lower it down. We got the car up off the ground safely on the jack stands. We're gonna have to take off the belly pan, which has got 14 fixings, six at the back, eight at the front. And you want to start off with a number 10 ratchet. And there's one there. And that one there. After you take those out, there's two more hidden here and here, and that is number 13 mil socket so remove those first okay we've removed those four two on each side and i'm going to go to the front going past ignoring these these rivets don't try and drill those out or anything we're going to go to the eight fixings at the front and start with these two phillips uh, two on each side so do those next okay so after you take these two out of here take these four little phillips screws out and then you can get access to these bolts here. There's one on each side. It's a 13 mil socket. And then we can finally get this floor pan off. Okay, we finally got the belly pan off. So over there, and we'll slide under the car. And you can see there's the uh, oil sump. And if you just go around the corner at 90 degrees, you'll see the sump plug, which we're going to need a 15 millimeter socket wrench to take that off. Definitely not to be confused with this 21 millimeter nut, which is this is the IRD unit, the uh, basically what gives the Freelander its four wheel drive. So we don't want to be messing with that today. We're going to have a go with this one. Just going to squirt it with a bit of WD-40. Just to get it going, 
And then we're going to lower the car down, start it up for a bit, just so we can get the oil nice and hot. Not too hot, but to make it easier to get the oil out of the car. Okay, so the car's been running for a couple of minutes. It's back down off the jack stands. Obviously you want a flat surface to be able to work in the car and more importantly it needs to be flat to get all the old oil, as much of the old oil as you can. And the first job is to undo the sump plug underneath, put your, uh, you cap your um, oil catching device, drip tray, whatever you want to call it underneath. And that's going to be dripping away for the whole time you'll be doing the rest of the service in order to get every last little bit out. Okay, we're going to start in the engine bay by removing this plastic air intake device off. And we're going to do that by removing or loosening this Jubilee clip, this one here, that one there. And there's two screws. There's one here and there's one under there, but you can't get to it until you've taken this thing off. And also, don't forget, there's some sensors like this one, which you, you push in and then pull off and there's also another sensor under there and there's one under there which you can remove as you're pulling this plastic thing off okay so I've loosened the pipes Jubilee clips pulled this one away got the screw under there the screw at the front we're going to start pulling away but you just have to pull this out of this little receptor here and as you pull it away you'll see it just comes away like that. Next to come off is this plastic piece here, which you'll need a uh, eight millimeter socket wrench. There's one, two, three bolts, very easy. Okay, we'll pull in the last bolt out of there, remove this cover, and reveals eight 10 mil bolts. And if you look down there, five. 11 mil nuts that need to come out so you can take off the air intake. Not forgetting the sensors, one on the side there, and there's one down there which you can get at as you're pulling it out. Okay, we've removed those uh, bolts and nuts, and all that remains in order to remove this air intake is to remove the EGR valve. This is actually an EGR bypass because uh, this is what an EGR would normally look like on your car. Um, probably filled with gunk like this one, probably worse than this one, but uh, they recommend that uh, you replace your EGR valve with one of these uh, uh, EGR bypass valve, which is easily found on eBay, not very expensive, which basically um, blocks off the exhaust gases from the from the exhaust manifold, comes directly from the exhaust manifold and recircula recirculates it through the engine normally, but this way you block all those oily, dirty gases from going through and it keeps the engine more clean. Um, also you can clean out your your air and inlet manifold if you like, because if you take it off and look inside you'll see that's also full of gunk. Uh, some people use barbecue cleaner, degreaser, they leave it overnight, wash it out with a, a washing brush or whatever, but um, that's up to you. But apparently it's recommended to replace it, so I have this. So you just undo this Jubilee clip, pull out the vacuum pipe. Four Allen bolts here, very easy to take off. That's the next job. Okay, we've unscrewed the EGR. Now it's time to get ready to pull this thing away. Your uh, model might have this connector on here. And there's another sensor over here, like I said before. So you're going to want to press that in, pull it down. And you can see, if we put this down somewhere, I don't know if you can see inside. I recently cleaned this one, so I'm not going to do it this time. But usually it's full of gunk in there from the EGR valve. So, next job is this plastic thing here. One, two, three, and there's two more. One there, one there behind. Five, five mil Allen bolts again. 
remove the cap, put it somewhere safe, make sure nothing drops in there. Take that off and then we can get at the air filter. Okay, we've got that back cover off. I'm going to put the, the oil cap back on while we're working just in case something falls in. And you can see, there's your air filter. Let's take that away. Check there's nothing in there, blockages or anything like that. And then quite simply, put your next one in. Nice fresh one, locates at the other side. And then you push it down at this side. Okay, new air filters in. So if you just reach down the back here, you find this, which is the turbo vent filter. So you just pull that off. Replace it with that one. You've plugged in your new turbo vent filter. Um, next job is to remove these three bolts. We've just started removing with a weird little tool called an E5, which is basically the female version of a Torx number five. Obviously, being careful not to drop them in those holes because then you're probably going to need a new engine. So remove those carefully and then carefully remove these clips. And then you can lift away the fuel rail in order to get to this filter here, the breather case filter. Now we've got five 5mm five Allen bolts. One, two, three, four. And one under there, five. Just remove those. And then we pull up this whole unit. Okay, some people suggest you have to take the uh, tops off these injectors, but I found I can I can get it out without taking those off. I just put the one line behind there. So there it is, off it comes. This is the part we're going to replace. So if you carefully remove that. And you see underneath. It's got a rubber seal that comes with the kit. Um, another thing to point out is you can get a BMW part which goes directly in there. Apparently it's called a separator which is a bit of an upgrade as opposed to using this thing. Um, but I'm just going to replace it with the OEM part. Stick that in and put it back. Don't forget before replacing the uh, breather case filter you need to re remove these little seals around there. You can see the tab on that one. Pull the little tabs around there, replace it with the two that come with the kit. Okay, got the new O-ring, dipped it in some fresh oil. Put it in there. Make sure it's secure. Just push this new filter back on. Like that. And then put it back in. Okay, we've put the air filter cover back on, the injector plugs back in and the three screws there. Now we move down to the air filter which is down there. You're going to need a 36mm spanner to get that out. I've already loosened it. So you take that out, take out your old filter which is a paper filter. Makes a bit of a mess. And you'll notice from the filter cap that there's three, one, two, three O-rings that need to be replaced and you would have got that with your service kit. Okay, there's your oil filter cap. Back on, hand tighten a little bit tighter, but not too tight because you'll crack it because it's only plastic. And then put everything back together in reverse of the way you took it off. And going back to this little uh, sensor plug here. First of all, make sure it's in that little crevice there, otherwise you'll get it trapped in between the manifold and the engine. And secondly, this, um, this sensor plug it's probably something that was used on earlier models which plugs here into the end of the fuel rail 
But on mine, which is a late 2004, early 2005, it's got a little upgrade here. And it's got a green plug on the end. And in fact, that plugs into there. And that one just dangles, doesn't plug anywhere. So take note of that. And also make sure when you're putting everything back together, there's a sensor right there to plug in. There's one right there. Make sure you plug them in, otherwise your uh, system might be working. Your turbo won't cut in, you'll be wondering what's going on. Okay, now we're going to take the sump plug, take off the old sump plug washer, replace it for a new one, throw that one away. Okay, to get your pollen filter out, your uh, cabin filter if you like, it's under here, underneath the passenger side. If you use this mirror, you can see four five mil bolts the other one that's there unscrew those pull it out and then this thing comes out because it's not much distance between the filter and the floor you just kind of bend it around and it the filter actually is designed to articulate around like that and then just insert the new one in the same way simple as that last thing to finish up in the engine babe before we go on to the diesel filter is engine oil most important thing don't forget to top your engine back up with oil before you ever start it again. Um, you're going to need about six and a half or 6.8 litres of oil. So put in about six, check your, dip, check your dipstick, put in another half a litre at a time and just make sure you don't go over the, the, uh, the highest mark on your dipstick. If it's at the lowest mark, you're probably going to need about another half a litre after that. Check all your levels. This is your brake fluid. Actually, mine's looking a bit low. There's a maximum line there, so you're going to need some dot four brake fluid. Uh, make sure that it's good up to 260 degrees um, minimum dry boiling temperature. Very important. Uh, this is your um, water for your cooling system. That's also looking pretty low. It's below the minimum mark, so there's a minimum and maximum. Just fill it up to the max. Uh, part antifreeze, part water. This is your power steering fluid. Mine's looking all right there, it's on the max. And top up your screen wash. You can get some uh, screen wash and uh, either put it in neat or mix it in with water, whatever. Uh, and that's it in the uh, engine bay. Okay, next thing to do is to check your braking system which you would normally do by removing your wheel and having a look at your brake pads but if you've got alloys like this and you don't mind getting a bit dirty you can stick your hand in there and you can actually feel the brake pad um, this one feels a bit low, the other side's about a quarter of an inch this one's about two or three millimeters which is pretty low um, so it would probably be a good idea to change it um, but while I'm here, I'm checking the brake discs at the same time and the brake pads wear away the disc in this middle section here but if you right on the end, it doesn't wear that bit away so you can feel a lip right there and you can feel a pretty pronounced, definite lip there. It's probably time to change your discs as well. So I'm going to let these pads run down a bit more, get a bit of more life out of them because when you change your discs, you have to change your pads at the same time. So best just to change them all at the same time. Another thing to remember is don't just, don't just change one pad when you do anything with your brakes to make sure the car's uh, running in a straight line and braking in a straight line. You want to change uh, in pairs. So pair of pads, pair of discs, and away you go. Okay, we're going onto the fuel filter, which on this model, which is the later Freelander 1 models, is under the real wheel wheel latch as you can see on the older models it's uh, underneath between the battery and this um, ECU under the bonnet and this one it's under here which you have to get to by checking the car up again put it on axle stands chucks on the front wheels put it in first gear for safety and then underneath here there's two 10 mil screws you can't see it now because I've pulled down this this whole housing which I'll show you in a minute there's two 10 mil nuts which you have to unscrew and then there's this kind of 
plastic panel thing with this little screw that comes out from here. So once you take these off, you can pull down this whole housing after you disconnect a couple of electrical cables on that side. And then on, this is the fuel filter here, this long thing. It's easier to actually remove this housing without trying to change the filter in situ. Um, it's got two push buttons on each side of this clip. So you squeeze them in, pull it out, there's one on each end. Make sure you have a drip tray for your diesel and then just slide it out and just pull it out of there. Um, and some people might experience difficulty getting it out, especially in England because the weather's not as good as it is here. Um, but when you put the new one in, cover it in some copper grease uh, before you slide it in so that you can uh, have an easier time of it next time. Uh, next time you want to replace it, this is your sedimenter and there's a little screw you can unscrew and, and let out some of the water and whatever it's collected from under there to clean it out. And then put it all back in reverse and that's it, simple as that. Okay, new diesel filters back in. Uh, I'm going to pull that off just before I put the connector on when I put it in. Um, there's an earth connector here, it's all rusted up. So I'm going to clean it off with a bit of glass paper before I put it in. Okay, uh, fuel filters back in, it's all screwed together. Oh, I've got the wheel off, might as well just check the um, brake drums pads as well. So if we take these two little grub screws out, remove those, give it a whack with a hammer. Take this off and have a look inside. Like we did on the front, we can check the thickness of the pads and the condition of the inside of the drum, which is effectively the equivalent to the brake disc on the front. Uh, they look all right, so put it back on. And we're off. Just check the check the um, shock absorbers aren't leaking as well while you're here. They're looking all right. Okay, all that's left to do is uh, check all your lights, replace your floor pan in the reverse of the way we took it off. And that's it, that's your full service. It's uh, all in all, it's pretty easy to do, even for a non-mechanic. And most of all, it's uh, saved you money and it's quite fun doing it. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video, see you later.